so there's all this stuff that we've talked about. There's a lot of things that are affecting us, our agencies these days. But like, what would you say is the number one thing you'd recommend that we can do to make the biggest impact moving forward? Yeah, us as agents. Like, what do you think? Yeah. I think just really having a good culture at work and having a a goal and a mission that, that our employees, our LSPs, our other people know where we're going and what we want to do and how it affects them and, and how we can all be successful. I think the best thing we can do is just to, to make sure that our people are motivated and understand what we're trying to do and that we're here to help. Insurance dudes are on a mission to escape being handcuffed by our agencies. How? By uncovering the secrets to creating a predictable, consistent, and profitable agency sales machine. I am Craig Pretzinger. I am Jason Feldman. We are agents. We are insurance dudes. Right now, while it's fresh in your mind, check out live.teledudes.com. We took our notes from over 100 interviews with top agents from around the country and made it into a live webcast. Using these strategies led Craig and I to selling more than $10 million in premium in the last two years. On this call, you'll receive the exact blueprint to get the same results. Just go to live.teledudes.com. Dot com to register for this upcoming Tuesday's live call with us. If you jump on this call with us, we're certain 2022 will be an absolutely fantastic year for you. See you there. We have so many customers that call in and just tell us how much they like everybody that's here and how much help we are. And they've never had an experience like they get from us, from an insurance agent. You know, so we do, we know who our people are. We fix their bumpers <laughs> um, I've gone out to a couple of people and picked them up when they had an accident or um, we send them a, send them some cookies or something. If they have some kind of life event they need some help with or something's going on. So we try to just make it fun here and, and make sure that we have a good, a good I love you know, environment. Yeah. So what do you, what are you guys doing for marketing? So we've been, so I had to stop for a while. We've been, Buying internet leads, mostly internet leads. We've done some live transfers. Um, we've done, we do some networking. I'm in a couple of networking groups here in town. Uh, we do some Google. We actually get quite a bit that people search us on Google. So we do that, a little bit of advertising there. But we've primarily made what we've made off of internet leads and using the teledudes for our telemarketing uh, I had to take a little break from that because it's just the two of us. And we have just been just bombarded the last couple of months with just taking care of the customers and the business that we have. I mean, it's all we can do just to to keep that going. So I'm hoping that we get some new people in here next week and we can get back on the telemarketing thing. But that's where we've done the majority of our business. I know a lot of people say how terrible internet leads are. And no matter what company that is, they just say they're bad. And Using the telemarketers, we have been able to reach so many more people than we do without them. My agents, my LSPs are busy just doing quotes and following up on old quotes that they've done. They don't have to be calling out on a lot of internet leads. And we continue to work those and follow up. And we have a good process now for keeping up with them and making sure we keep in contact with the ones that we've quoted and we didn't sell. And one of the other agents around says we sell everybody they either buy from us or they die and i think we (laughs) kind of have the same the same mentality is we're just going to keep calling and they can hang up on us if they want as long as they don't tell us to never call them again we're just going to keep calling and calling and eventually we'll sell them but internet leads are where we've really we've done the most i probably have 15 18 000 internet leads in our lead manager Nice. Got to be just like Ferris Bueller. Keep calling and calling right. and calling. <laughs> yep, we keep it. We keep doing it. So, are you day. guys are you guys rocking referrals right now? We actually are doing pretty good with referrals and with some of the networking that we've been doing. Some of the groups that I'm in. Um, cool. We've gotten quite a bit of business off of that. But like I said, it's just we've had tons of claims and. You know, rates, as you guys know, rates have been a little bit crazy the last couple of months. 
So we've been taking a lot of calls from customers asking why their rates have gone up and trying to keep them from jumping ship. So it's just been really the last, really since the holidays, uh, we've just struggled with doing a whole lot of outbound uh, marketing. And what we should be starting again probably next week. Cool. With all that, yeah. I'm glad you guys got a couple people on the uh, batter's box. Yeah, I've got a couple of good ones, and I think they'll both they'll both work out really well. One I've known for two years, and um, he'll he'll do really well. He's aggressive. A lot of people don't like him, but just because he's really aggressive. And um, then the other one is really she's really good. So we just gotta get them in here and then reevaluate how we what process is each person has and what we're doing but it's, awesome yeah we're doing it's good so i'm excited about that i'm excited about a lot of things we've made a lot of mistakes i've done a lot of stupid things since we've been here but um we're still here and we're still going strong and we're gonna revamp next week and start kicking it again so i'd love to hear what you do when you get that new client what's that onboarding process for new clients is there some sort of path you follow when you bring them on? Yeah, well, we, so usually once they come on, I'll call them a day or two later just to thank them as the agency owner. I do sell a little bit. So you know, there's some people that never, some agency owners never talk to the customers or never sell anything. I try to give everything I can to my LSPs. Even if I do a quote for somebody and they're ready to buy, a lot of times I'll just turn that over to them. Say here, Mr. Jones wants it's ready to buy his policy. You want to give him a call and see if he can get, get his information. So once we get the sale, I will call the customer. If I've talked to them or not talked to them, I'll call them back the next day or so and thank them for their business, make sure that they were taken care of really well and ask if they have any questions or any problems. Uh, we will call them then about two weeks later and make sure that once, generally once their policy started and active and we make sure that they've got their ID cards. They've logged into their app on the phone if they're going to do that, uh, just to just follow up and make sure that that they don't have any questions and that everything's fine. We do offer to, with everybody to cancel their existing policy for them, which we do for most people. So they really appreciate that. So we do talk to them and touch them at that point too, because we will call and a lot of times the other carriers will want them on the phone. So we'll get them on the phone and cancel their policy for them. We'll follow up with maybe an email a couple months later. And then everyone before they renew, we either call or email, definitely leave them messages, but we'll call everybody before their first renewal and just ask them, you know, how things are going. If they've got any any problems, any questions, make sure they have their ID cards and download their new ID cards. Um, But we just try to make sure that we've got good contacts with them. And we send some emails out through our um, our CRM pretty regularly just to say hi. We send birthday greetings out through the email to everybody on their birthday. Cool. So, yeah, we, I mean, we try to stay in touch with them and make sure that they know we're here for them. If they file a claim, we call them as soon as they file a claim. We usually will call them again sometime in that claim process just to make sure that everything went okay, see if they have any questions or problems. And we get a few people that I don't know if I you heard me if I said that to you or not or somebody else earlier, but we've get a few older people that just um, don't know what to do or don't want to do it, whatever mm-hmm. it is. And so we'll be in contact with them almost every day or every couple of days just to make sure that they have what they need. Did you get your rental car? The body shop have your cars, everything going okay. You know the number for your claim contact. We can't do a whole lot for them, but we can make sure that they keep connected with the claim contact. And and we have a couple of customers that will email us. You know, I don't understand what they're asking me for in this email. My car was a total loss and they're asking me to sign off on this. I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. And, you know, really they should be calling their claims contacts, but we try to walk them through that and and let the claims people know that they have questions as well. So we're... Right. We communicate probably a little, probably over communicate with some of those customers, but I think it helps us with our retention. 
Yeah, I was going to say, would that be, would you say that's your pretty much your number one retention tactic is to yeah. really just spend a lot of time? Yeah, we do. And if it's a monoline policy, we will call them probably a couple times over the next few months just to see if we can't get their other business, whether it's renters or homeowners or a boat or whatever. We'll keep in contact with them like that for a little while as well. But yeah, I think our the way we treat our customers and and help them and keep in contact with them, I think really helps us on our retention. We have quite a few people that they're, they have crazy increases. They've had an accident and they have like an 80% increase on their rate. And, you know, I tell them, you know, you just go, I mean, you should go look around and see what you can get. And, you know, if we can, if we can help, if we can do anything, we will, but you know, just check around, see, I feel bad for people that have an 80% increase in their rates. And most of those people that we talk to about that, they just want to change something because they don't want to leave us. Yeah. And so that's, that's really nice when you have a customer that says, you know, I, I don't want to leave you. I, is there something we can do? Can I lower my, some limits or raise my deductibles? And we try not to do anything that's going to put their, them in jeopardy. We don't hate to lower liability limits or anything that somebody maybe they'll say, well, just take the rental car off or raise my deductible from 500 to a thousand or something. So we have quite a few people that because we treat them so well, even though we're telling them to leave with their rates, they stay. <laughs> yeah. And you can hear it even right now. Like this, this whole thing is a, it's a mental game, right? Of a marathon where right. it's up and down and up and down and up and down. And most people are always posting about how awesome everything's going. You know, it sounds like you're in a little bit of one of the, the, the dips right now. And I think that it's real important at number one, I honor you for being so transparent and obvious and, and or not obvious and um, open about it. Mm-hmm. But, but also knowing that like, you know, you're going to, you're going to dig out and, and you're going to get back right. up where you're crushing it. So how do you keep yourself motivated under, under these under these conditions, besides listening to this podcast, because obviously right. that's probably right. the biggest motivator. But besides that, what kind of things do you do? Well, so yeah, there's a, I mean, there's a few different podcasts that I listen to occasionally. Yours is number one, of course. <laughs> and um, but I look at, you know, there's other agents out there that are crushing it. You hear about the captive that we're with, or other people are with, how terrible it is, and maybe how how bad it is in New York, for example, or New Jersey or whatever, how we, there's no business, you can write no business. And I heard somebody on one of your podcasts a couple of weeks ago from up there and he's doubled his business in five years. And so there's so many people out there that are doing really well, despite, and it's in every industry, it's not just insurance, but despite how bad you might think somebody is, something is on your side, there are people that are killing it. And right. you just have to really have the right processes and the right attitude. And I see those other people and that motivates me when I see them, that they're able to be, be successful. And I look and see how many, we get a list every month. Now I think they just started, but I've never seen them before, but of how much the top agents in the country and the top agents in our region. And when I see what they're doing for business and how far off we are from that, there's opportunities out there. And so right. Just try to keep a good attitude and and make sure that we're all in here working for the same thing and we're taking care of our customers. I think one of the ways we keep ourselves motivated probably is by helping the customers that we have so well that they're happy with us, that it helps keep us in a little bit better spirits as well. And then everybody's not jumping ship and we're not losing. But it is it's frustrating. There are days when we We'll sell seven, eight people. Everybody that calls in, we will bind a policy. First call, they call in. It's super expensive, even, and but we're half the price of the other guys, um, or what? Or they want to buy from us. Whatever it is, we have those days, and then the next day, you do fifty quotes, and not one person. You're not. You're <laughs> right. half. You're twice as much as everybody else. You wonder how am I ever going to sell another policy? Yep. And you just have to keep plugging away at it and. And know that there's light at the end of the rainbow. I've got goals for where I want to be in the next couple of years. And we just need to keep working towards that. So we have a meeting every morning. We talk about where we're at, where we want to go, what we want to do. And um, we just 
come in and keep plugging away. The hardest part really, and that's where we've had, we've struggled the last couple of months with just the two of us here and other things that have been going on like COVID and other problems is that we're just bombarded by what's going on every day. There was a book we read at my last job as a group that talked about, you know, the whirlwind. And unless you specifically go out there and every day and have a plan and this is what you're going to do and you try to achieve that, the whirlwind will just take over and you'll just be Mm. stuck. At the end of the day, there's several days where I finished the day and it's like, the only thing I did is take care of like three people with their claims because there were so many issues or, you know, trying to save a customer or whatever it is, you just get stuck in all of that noise. And unless you really have a good plan and have a good attitude, it's easy to get caught up in that and, and get down. Yep. I agree. Yeah. You got to keep yourself motivated for sure. Especially, especially since there's a lot of that within just owning a business in general. Right. 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 And that's, that's the thing. I'm thinking, you know, I, I'm a business owner, but all I'm doing all day and a lot of times is just taking, putting out fires and taking care of problems. And that's not what I should be doing. We should be selling. I mean, we should be spending so much more time selling and hoping that that's going to happen once we get some new people in here. But, nice. uh, but yeah, it's just been, it's been frustrating the last couple of months. Um, You'll get had, there, man. You always yeah, do. Well, we, we will. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not too worried about it. I yeah. actually feel a lot better the last couple of weeks than I have, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's a lot of work and it's a struggle. And every day we come in and we put our happy face on and, and make calls. And my, the person here in my office has stepped up so much. I think yesterday she made 120 calls, maybe 120 nice, nice. calls still with all the stuff coming in at us and everything going on. I mean, we're just doing everything we can to, to be successful. Love and it. We will, so, we will be. Yes, you will. So there's all this stuff that we've talked about. There's a lot of things that are affecting us, our agencies these days. But like, what would you say is the number one thing you'd recommend that we can do to make the biggest impact moving forward? So that who can do like any of us? Yeah, us as agents. Like, what do you think? Yeah, I think just really having a good culture at work and having a, a goal and a mission that that our employees our LSPs, our other people know where we're going and what we want to do and how it affects them and and how we can all be successful. I think the best thing we can do is just to to make sure that our people are motivated and understand what we're trying to do and that we're here to help help people with their insurance. We're not just here to make commission, uh, even though that's why we're here, is to <laughs> make a living. But I mean, just to I think the biggest thing we can do is just keep our people positive. Right now, every all the carriers are having big rate increases, and that's frustrating. People are calling in with questions about that, or there's a lot of people shopping around. Um, but just keeping keeping positive, keeping everybody positive, knowing what's going on in the industry and what's going on in our office. I think being engaged is probably the biggest thing that we can do is just not be an absentee boss and mm. uh, just being there for everyone, I think is, yep. is our, our biggest strength. I mean, it's, it's tough right now. You know, COVID's not going away anytime soon. Things are, the employees are, they're not people out there that, that are easy to find to hire. It just takes a lot of work. And I think it's a lot of time and energy and effort and um, just make sure that we're here every day doing the best we can. Yes. Jay, Jay Franklin, thank you so much, man. This has been awesome. It's uh, really, really refreshing to have you on and get a lens into your world over there in Tejas. And uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, thanks for, for popping on. It's oh, thank you guys. You. Yeah, when um, the, the way things have been going the last couple of months, when your purse, Emily, or whoever called and asked about being on the podcast, I'm thinking, are you sure you know who you're talking to? Because <laughs> oh, we, we have- know. We have, we, struggled, know. we have struggled so much for the last three or four months and um, we're just starting to come out of it. But I thought, you know, I'm but not, that's uh, the real, you know, like we've right. all been there and it's like, yep. we love the wins cause it does motivate us. But to know right. that other people go through the same stuff, it really right. helps. So well, I heard, I know you need to go, but I heard somebody over, I heard him talking at a 
trade show several years ago. A couple of guys from another company. I don't even know who they were. I don't even remember what company they worked for. But one, I think one worked for one company and one had been there and left. And they were both talking about how bad some bosses were that they had and the company and the decisions that were made and all this stuff was just horrible and they, they hated it. But the one guy that was still there was just laughing about it. He says, Oh yeah, we've been through, you know, three managers since then. And, and I, and what the way they were talking, it hit me that, you know, you just can't, can't give up and leave just because things aren't going the way that you want them to today. Things are going to change. They always Mm -hmm. do. They've changed a lot in my unfortunately, 40 years of being in the working world, um, they, things change all the time. And if you're going to give up because you've got a bad manager or a, a company that's making decisions you don't think are the right decisions or whatever it is, if you stick it out and you work hard, you'll be successful and eventually things will change and get better. Right? Yep. So, so that's I mean, kind of the way I feel about it and try to get across to everybody that I work with, too. Love it. Cool, man. Well, All right. I, we'll definitely have to check back in with you and, and uh, we okay. want to hear that win. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, cool. I do too. So thank you guys. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Jay. Awesome. Thank thanks, you, Jay. And I said, Jason, I get confused. I'm 90. <laughs> so no you, you have an awesome one. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll touch base down the road. All right. We'll talk to you guys later. Okay. Thanks. See ya. Bye. See ya. Hey, what are you still doing here? Well, while you're still here, and while it's fresh in your mind, check out live.teledudes.com. Yeah, if you weren't listening before, we took notes from over 100 interviews with top agents from around the country and made it into a live webcast. Using these strategies did help Craig and I write over $10 million in premium in the last couple of years. And let me tell you, on this call, you'll receive the exact blueprint to get the very same results. Again, that's live.teledudes.com to register for this upcoming Tuesday's live call with us. And if you jump on with us, we are certain 2022 will be an absolutely fantastic year for you. See you there.